Putting these markers up is important. You may recognize them, metal historical markers with the outline of the state. There are nearly 750 of them installed statewide, and about 80 of them are dedicated to black historical topics. In honor of Black History Month, we spoke with the man behind three of them so far. I'm an archive rep. I love the archives in the library. Curiosity cultivates results for Army veteran Leon Bates. This historical marker at 2140 Boulevard Place started with his work as a Pan-African Studies major. He was a, um, a research project when I was at uh, IUPUI. That research started with a simple question. I found a newspaper article about an African-American police officer who died in Indianapolis in 1922 at Ward Sanitarium. So the first thing was to figure out what was Ward Sanitarium. But of course, the building is long gone. It was torn down in 1965-66 when they built the interstate. Curiosity resulted in answers. Dr. Ward was the first African-American to lead a U.S. Army field hospital, first African-American to lead a veterans hospital, first African-American to lead a major hospital in the United States. In a time of segregation, Indy's Ward Sanitarium was the longest-lived black hospital in central Indiana. So this is how some of your first black nurses in Indiana got trained. His medical legacy lives on through permanent words, reading Lieutenant Colonel Joseph H. Ward, ND. His story had gone basically untold until I had stumbled into it and then sent the application to Casey and Nicole. Those are the women behind the historical marker program, and they know Bates's research. <laughs> I'm getting pretty notorious with those guys. His advocacy generated not one, but three black history-related markers in Indiana. Hmm. <laughs> That right there is Dr. Ward. This is the extensive file behind Dr. Ward's marker. It allows you to track their life, and that's really interesting. Casey Pfeiffer and Nicole Politica took Bates' robust applications and verified all the information. They spent a year cross-checking references, vetting it for statewide significance and primary sources before each word is cast in aluminum. Go to the history reference room next. These markers date back to 1946. Language has changed, research standards have changed. New resources like Ancestry.com help put more Hoosier black history into art. We continue to see the numbers grow. This past marker cycle, we're working currently on 16 new markers. Four of those, so 25%, are black history related. But there are many more black stories to tell in the form of markers markers in Indiana. When you look at Indiana Avenue, the rich history that existed there, how much was, um, you know, community was displaced for either the building of IEPY, um, other areas of the city for highway development. So not that markers are the end all be all, but they are one way that we can help to share that story of what may no longer be standing. Only about 10% of the completed markers are black history related. We definitely need the public to apply for more markers that um, commemorate the civil rights movement, black power movement, because we've discovered through our research that, you know, those events happened here. Markers only come to life when people like Bates apply. I'm honored that they trust me to do this research um, in an inclusive and accurate way. I was very careful when I researched it and wrote it. They were very careful when they reviewed my research. Dedicated community members spend hours to bring unknown black stories to life. There's a lot of time that gets put into it, but it beats going to a bar. Time well spent creating tangible reminders of our past. Reminders that last long after death and demolition in our town. I got a list of a few more I'm going to do. Uh, these people need to be recognized. A marker costs $3,300. Bates got at least one of them covered by the American Legion Post 25 in Princeton. Mid-July is the deadline for the next cycle of historical marker applications. They start accepting applications in April. The board approves applications in September. And then the team of five pulls more documents. Then the following spring or summer, the marker is actually installed. For a list of every single marker they have, go to the story on WRTV.com for a link. You can make an appointment with the Historical Marker Program Director and others about making changes to current markers or new ones. There's a marker review report online if you want to give feedback. Pfeiffer also says they're working with the Black Heritage Preservation Program at Indiana Landmarks to get community feedback on black history markers.